Hi, it's me again, Vero. Welcome to my channel. Hello guys, in today's video I want to talk about what you actually need to start to use watercolors and the simple basic techniques that you need to know to begin with. This video guys is also sponsored by Skillshare, again, um, I'm very thankful when someone appreciate what you do and decide to support it and if you want to support me, support my sponsor as well. By the way, Skillshare is an online learning community where you can find also classes about every topic, also about the topic uh, I'm going to talk about today, so watercolors. There are lots of watercolor classes and I will link some of them in the description box if you are interested in one and you are curious about it. Skillshare is also very affordable and it's less than $10 per month if you get the yearly subscription premium. But if you just want to try it out, the first 500 of you that will use the link down below will get two months of free premium Skillshare. So you can try it, you can follow all the classes that I will link down below and try it for yourself and see if you like it or not. And yeah, for two months, you can take tons of classes. Skillshare is also great because as I said, it's a community. And when you follow a class, you can post your project underneath uh, the video in a project section and your teacher will probably review it. And it's like just like going to school because feedback, feedback is very important and you can even get feedback from Skillshare. So that is like the greatest thing about it. Also, you can get feedback for other people that have done the project and that creates a very beautiful community and that will make you improve in whatever you're trying to learn. So don't forget to use the link. I know that can be very overwhelming. The feeling of starting to use a new medium because you don't know where to start. You don't know what to buy and you don't know how to use it. So in today's video, I'm going to address all of these things so that I can make the life easier for you. Now, there are two schools of thoughts about what you actually need to start with watercolors. There are people that think that student grade watercolors exist for a reason and there are people that think that you should directly start with professional watercolors because they're easier to use. And I totally understand both of point of views and I can just divide these two things into categories. Have you ever painted something in your life? Did you ever touch a paintbrush? If you sort of know how to paint and you view and you paint with other techniques, I highly suggest you that to start with student grade watercolors. If you've never painted before and you don't know where to start, you don't know what to do, I think that professional watercolors <laughs> Are the best for you to start with because people that never painted before is not very patient you get motivated very easily so you need some rewards and sometimes professional watercolors are really really much easier to use so that can motivate you because they actually makes you feel like you're better than what you actually are professional watercolors can really make a difference sometimes because they blend much easier, they flow very well. I feel like student grade is not as good quality. There are fillers in them, sometimes they become chalky very easily. And I feel like if you kind of have some experience working painting in general, you, you can work perfectly with them. But if you've never painted before, you might find that very frustrating and you might ask yourself, why can't I paint? Why is it so difficult? So first of all, you probably don't have any patience and you probably think everything is easy when it's not. That's why I suggest you to buy professional grade watercolors. But you don't need many colors, so it, it wouldn't be that expensive because I suggest you to begin with only buy the primaries because you are a very beginner, you don't know anything about color mixing. So you learn to mix colors, you learn to use watercolors, and you feel more motivated because you kind of get a reward because they're pretty easy to use. And if you already have experience and you know how to mix colors, etc., just buy um, a student grade set. 
I started with a, a Cotman set. I never felt, you know, there are some limitations, but to begin with, it's perfect. You can use, you can even start with kids watercolors, because if you have some practice, you have the skills to make them work anyway. And anyway, with kids watercolors, you won't get anything extraordinary out of them, but they are still watercolors. You can kind of get an idea on how it is to work with watercolors, and that's like the main thing that you need to do. Do I really want to paint with watercolors? It is something that I can do it. It is something that I would like. You have to ask yourself these questions because I don't want you to waste money on something that you'll never use ever again. So please take these things into consideration before buying paints. As I said, the colors that you need aren't many. I wouldn't suggest you to start with more than 12 colors because you need to learn color mixing. Um, mixing watercolors can be a little bit tough because watercolors is such a transparent and delicate media that can get muddy very easily and it's not like oil paints or acrylics paints there's no white involved with it you could use it but it will completely change the effect of the paint if you are using professional watercolors you can start with primary colors plus black and you need, really need four you can choose between the two primary colors depending on what kind of paint you want to do. Do you want bright colors or do you want more organic colors? If you want more natural organic colors, I suggest you to use the red, blue and yellow primaries. And if you want more bright, vivid water colors, um, I suggest you to use the magenta, cyan, yellow kind of primary. But it's better to have both of them in your palette so what I would suggest is get, you know, you get your worms and your colds so you can mix a much bigger amount of colors. And I suggest you to also put black and white because sometimes you will want your watercolors to be more opaque and there are certain colors that you need black to mix. These watercolors are perfect, you just really need seven or <laughs> eight, what, eight colors, so I don't think that the price will be much overwhelming and there are brands that make primary sets um, if you want to use the engraved paint uh, I suggest you to buy Cotman in, in tubes because sometimes the paint the pens are a bit difficult to re-wet and that can be frustrating so just buy the tubes and squeeze it out a little bit when you need it also with Van Gogh paint I know that they're very good to the engraved paints and they work they perform really well but I also suggest you to buy them in tubes because I feel like they perform better. About the brands, I know it's overwhelming the amount of brands that are out there and it's difficult to choose because of course certain paints have certain characteristics and certain other paints have certain other characteristics. You know it's difficult to find watercolor paints that can do everything that watercolors can hunt to do. If you want watercolors that are like tops <laughs> I suggest you to go for Daniel Smith and Schminke because I feel like those are the most consistent and the most easier to use actually. Schminke watercolors blends like a dream. Daniel Smith to the other end, they're like perfect. <laughs> they layer well, they blend well, they flow well. Also Winsor Newton are great. I feel, like, I feel like these are the best that I've tried. You can also buy White Knights watercolors. White Knights watercolors are very affordable and they have come in a big giant pan and they cost around 2 euros per pan and they're professional, they perform very well, the intensity is great for the price. They are wonderful watercolors. White Knights watercolors are among my favorite. I feel like it's better to start with a limited amount of colors because um, by mixing them, you really realize what are the colors that you really need. Because once you find yourself always mixing the same colors, you can buy it <laughs> and not mix it anymore. Because sometimes you use so much of the colors that mixing it all the time, it's a bit time consuming. Now about the paper. Guys, paper is very important with watercolors. It's not like acrylics or oils where you can paint basically everywhere. Paper in watercolors is more important than watercolors themselves because cheap watercolors can perform pretty well on good quality paper but good watercolors can perform really bad on really bad paper. 
So what I suggest you to use is a good quality paper. <laughs> the problem with paper is that it's pretty expensive. Uh, watercolors are overall a quite expensive media compared to the amount of color paint that you get. Price, it's higher than other kinds of paint. That the paper is very important, especially if you're a beginner. There are two types of watercolor paper. That's the cotton paper and that's the cellulose paper, wood pulp paper. And there are pe paper in between that have a percentage of cotton, but they're mainly made of cellulose. Just don't buy cotton paper to begin with, just buy cheap paper, but good quality paper. It's the sizing, the problem. <laughs> sizing is um, a substance that it's inside the watercolor paper and it's on the watercolor paper as well. It's a layer of preparation that allows the watercolors to perform the best. Cotton paper has a better absorbency and if they're sized well, they can perform the best with watercolors. Uh, cellulose paper sometimes, they don't absorb the color quite well and um, so it's much easier to lift the color. But there are good quality uh, cellulose paper, wood pulp paper that I would suggest, would recommend to you. My favorite of, of them all is the Winsor Newton wood pulp paper. It has a great cover. I always use it. The texture is the same as cotton paper. Their performance is very similar to cotton paper. I just adore it and I think it's wonderful quality paper. Also, Canson. Uh, Canson is great, but not as great. The colors get lifted much easier. I haven't tried many paper because when I find something that I like, I, stuck, I stick with it. So. Winsor Newton paper, it's wonderful. If you are using professional watercolors and you're finding problem, it might be the paper, even with student grades. If you find like impossible to paint, it's because you're using the wrong paper because with watercolors, you can just use any paper. You need specific paper. For the brushes, you just need synthetic brushes. You can use the flat ones. You can use um, just a set of cheap synthetic Mm, brushes. I've made a video about the brushes that I use and all the links to all the brushes that I use are in there. I buy them from uh, eBay or AliExpress. A set costs around three dollars. You can, I feel like you, you can find one of those um, sets like similar to that at Daiso. I know that Daiso synthetic brushes are good. A set of synthetic brushes, it's perfect. It's all you need to begin with. Now let's go on the table so I can show you everything. And here's some tips for you. Spray some water on your watercolors, especially if you use to student grade, and wait a little and in this way they will melt easier. Use a water container with two departments or two jars or two mugs, whatever, so that you can always have clean water. One part is for dirty water and the other one for clean water. So every time your brush is dirty, to clean it up, always dip it into the dirty water first and then wipe it a bit on the tissue paper and wash it again into the clean water. And this way your water will stay cleaner for a longer period of time. When you paint, guys, always keep tissue paper or rugs around you because they are fundamental. You need to wipe your brush all the time. When you clean the brush, swipe it on the border of the jar to make it pointy. Always treat your brushes with care. Do not leave the brush upside down in the water container because you will ruin it. The bottle will get rust on it and the point will bend. Plus, the glue that keeps the bristles together might lose the, the strength and hairs might fall out. Do not use your brushes aggressively because you might break the bristles and the brush will lose its shape forever. So always be delicate, just gently tap it and rotate it to always make it stay pointy, never scratch it onto the surface. When you pick up the paint from your watercolor pan, do it a little bit at a time. Don't scratch the pens and don't use so much color directly on the paper. <laughs> be careful. You have to dilute it first before using it. You have to be gentle even when you mix the paints. Uh, there is no need to scratch the brush on the palette. Now I'm going to try to teach you the basic watercolor techniques that I always use every time I paint. To get an even flat wash, 
you have to pay attention to the amount of water that you use because it has to be evenly distributed all around. Those darker areas are excess of color and you have to spread it all around. If necessary, dry the brush on the tissue so that the brush will absorb the excess paint that's on the paper. So it, everything will become more even. You have to work pretty fast and at first uh, it will be difficult, but with a little bit of practice, you will learn it in zero time. What you can do to make it even more uh, flat is going back and forth with the brush, but use light pressure uh, like a feather. Don't do it too much because you risk to ruin the paper. And you can use this with all the technique that I'm going to show you. To make a gradient with one color that goes for from dark to light, pick up the color from your palette and spread it evenly on the side that you want it to be dark. Now you have to put just the flat dark color and spread it evenly. Then wash your brush pretty well and fill the rest of the paper that you want to color in a lighter shade with water. Good watercolors on good watercolor paper will basically blend on their own, but you can use that back and forward movement to help you with the blending. Always start from the lighter side first and don't overdo it this time because otherwise everything will become a flat wash. If you need, dry the brush to remove the excess paint and repeat the back and forward movement as you until you're pleased with the result. Now I want to show you two ways I use to blend two colors together. The first way is doing it directly onto the paper. Put one color on one side and the other one on the other side, then they will blend in the middle. You can blend it in the middle. You can use always this back and forward movement, always with moderation, starting from the light side to the darkest and always with very little pressure like a feather. The other way is blending two colors with layers. You just need to make a gradient like I showed you before and then you have to wait for it to be perfectly dry and then you make an, another gradient on the opposite direction um, with the other color. But you have to be very careful not to lift the color underneath and you have to use very little pressure and less water than usual. To blend the color into the other, uh, dry the brush before, before you use it, you need to have very little water. Now I'm showing you what the wet and wet technique does to the color. Firstly, I wet the paper with water, but this works even if you wet the paper with the color, you know, it just needs to be wet. When you put color onto a wet surface, the color spread and flow, creating very soft effects. And it's very different from when you put it on dry paper, isn't it? Now I'll try to explain how to make layers with watercolors. To begin with, I made a random first layer just to show you. First off, you have to wait for the layer to be completely dry. Otherwise, what you're gonna do is melting everything together and it's, it's not good. I divided the section in two to show you what you shouldn't do and what you should do. The first mistake is using too much paint onto the brush. Uh, for layers, you shouldn't use brush saturated with color because uh, on certain papers especially, the color really melts easily. So you just need to add a little color at a time and do it slowly so that you don't lift the layer underneath, causing very big problems. You always have to take into consideration the amount of water you use. Putting too much water will melt everything and create hard edges. The second mistake is using the brush too aggressively. That way you lift the paint. Uh, to avoid that, always be delicate, like a feather, like I said before. The right way to simply proceeding is with cautious. Slowly, building a color a little bit at a time. The amount of water must be consistent. Um, all over and homogeneous if you want a flat wash. If you want to make a grading like I'm doing, you have to put more paint, of course, at the base. And as you blend it into the other color, you don't have to add more water because it might it will lift the color underneath. You just need to use a dry brush uh, and you have to um, blend 
uh, the water, the, the liquid on top, homogeneously, in order for them to dry at the same time and not create hard edges. And here's what happens when you try to layer on a layer that's not perfectly dried. Um, this paper, for example, is very forgiving. It really, it, it really is hard to mess up with this paper. But uh, what happened is that you left the color underneath, creating like sort of color holes that are extremely difficult to re reco recover, like to adjust, to fix. Um, and this is how it looks on an, another kinds of paper. You know, it's a disaster. It's just very difficult to fix and everything will be uh, patchy. So I don't suggest you to do that. Now, this is all the technique that I wanted to tell you because these are enough if you're a beginner. Now I'm going to put everything I explained to you into practice and show you how I apply these techniques to my painting. First off, you have to remember to put tape all around your paper so that it warps slash buckle less. The first thing I do is starting to make the washes and you should always start from the lightest color to the darkest because the darker colors might bleed into the lightest because water melts watercolors. So you have to be careful with that because you can't really erase watercolors. So I start from the face, I make a wash, and then when everything is still wet, I use a blush color, I use red to color the cheeks and the nose and you know all the things that I want to be soft and really blended. This is a thing that you can basically only achieve with a wet wet technique so you have to do it quickly before everything dries. Be careful not to put too much water and not to leave excess of paint um, in some places because those things will create discoloration, patchiness, the water on the top, on the surface, the color must be homogeneous all over the place so that it will dry at the same time and it will be uniform. When the first layer is perfectly dried, I make the second layer just on some parts to intensify certain parts. All the things that you want to be more knitted and not very blended, you must be painted on a dry layer. If you do it on wet and wet, everything will flow all over the place and blend into each other. And so I, I do this to add like details and the colors for example, the lips, because I don't want the darker red colors to spread all around. For the hair, I make um, I made the one color gradient. I place a darker shade on the roof, and then I blended everything with water. Always be sure to control the amount of water because uh, if you put more water on certain parts and less on other, it will dry unevenly. So uh, you have to be quick, pretty quick. You have to do work basically on two parts at the same time because these are have two parts. So work a little bit there a little, and a little bit on the other side so that uh, you don't get any patchiness. Anyway, this is it uh, for this video. Um, I think I explained pretty much how I apply these techniques. If you have any questions, I can make another video if you want. Tell me what you can't do with watercolor so I just, I can help you with that. So I hope you find this helpful. Thank you for watching. If you're interested in more classes about watercolors, I left some link in the description box for you to see. Remember that the first 500 of you will get two months of free premium school share, so you can just follow all of those classes that are linked in the description box if you're interested. Thank you for watching and I hope you liked this video and yeah, bye bye.